All right, here we go, everybody. Welcome to the stream on the Screws Golf Christmas Tournament Reveal Edition. So, <clears throat> as you can imagine, let's go talk about the new course and some of the strategies. Here we go. All right, welcome, 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 welcome. Yes, to On The Screws Golf. Yes, to the Christmas tournament. And yes, to the new Christmas tournament holes and nine hole course. Wow, what a gift from Playdemic, right? Opening up the Christmas tournament, ending the year on a bang and uh, giving us everything we wanted in our aka proverbial pd stocking which is in my opinion a really long looking course okay so with that being said why don't we get right into it and um let me get my annotation tools ready um well first of all i can't annotate until i get everything set up so Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. And let's go to hole number one. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. So um, let's draw and we'll go black and yellow and red. Okay. So we'll go with black. First preference line of attack is, um, is black. So um, in my opinion... What I'm looking for um, on first glance at this hole is what's the best route of attack, right? So it looks as if going to the right over in this area over here, okay, um, probably is not something we want to do, okay? Um, the reason is because you have... Um, Sorry, everybody. You have this area right here, right? All this bunker area that you can hook it into. You have this rough area in the middle here that you could get caught up in. You can possibly go through the area and get caught in up here. And then if you try to cut it over this bunker on the right-hand side, you might be able to get caught up in that area, right? So look at that little window you have to be perfect on that side, all right? So again, you have four options of possible um, entrapment versus one possible perfect shot, bounce by all of that and land out in um, and past that, which would be out in this range out here, okay? So that's just the first impression going to the right. All right, so let's undo all of that. Let's now say we're gonna try a different angle and we're gonna bounce it here and we're gonna end up here. So let's take a look at what our possible areas of concern will be. Um, obviously, if you hit it right, again, you can get into that little zone. If you hit it right, you can get in this bunker area. If you hit it left, you can get all in this area over here, right? If you hit it long and left, you can get out here, all right? so. What is, you know, what, what's the advantage going left compared to right? Well, in my opinion, if you take a look at um, the left angle, if you want to then get a direct route into the green of shortest distance, that's the reason why I suggest that I will be going that way, okay? Got to be precise, have to hit the ball perfect, um, and you... Uh, really have to be understanding of what your club's going to do, what the distance is, what the spin is, and then you have to use the complementary ball that goes with that, okay? So in my opinion, we should start out here, bounce it there, end up in this circle, and then take our second shot moving forward to there, okay? Now, 
if you want to go ahead and um, take a different route, of course we can. You can come out to here, right? And then you can then end up right in that area and then try to take it over that bunker with a lot of backspin like a, um, a guardian, possibly a short guardian, or you're going to have to have a Saturn or a backbone with a lot of backspin. Okay. So if it's leveled up, great. If it's not, you could have some problems going there. You might have to bounce it. Um, let me get a circle here real quick. You may have to bounce it way back in this area just to get it up on the green. So we're looking at a landing zone here, roll out to the edge of that circle and then maybe bounce it as close to that front rough as possible and then bounce it and trickle it on. Or if you have an, uh, a Goliath, a Saturn or a backbone that is leveled up, you might be able to um, stop the ball pretty close, if not get it in the hole. So that's my suggestion on hole number one. I'm gonna start off on Thursday with some practice rounds, obviously, and try both routes, and then we may come back and do this event one more time, and then pick the best of the two options, okay? All right, very, very good. So let's get rid of all of this. Get rid of that, so then we can go on to hole number two. All right, looks good. Oops, sorry, get my annotation back. All right, I'm gonna switch to black, which would be a pre preference line. All right, so from the up tees, okay, it looks as if, if you wanna to go to the left or right, it's, both are gonna be fine. Looks like you're gonna be able to um, go either route. Um, the safe play, in my opinion, on this, um, I think it's par five. <laughs> I don't even know, how about that? Um, but obviously it looks like a par five. Um, I believe, man, you're gonna have to use a big enough club with a big enough ball if you wanna go ahead that direction, okay? Um, let me get rid of that. Let me put it a straight arrow, which is easier. If you wanna get it out to this area, right? and then possibly um, get into this zone here. And then obviously then the next shot would be up in here and then bounce it in here and then bounce it on the green, okay? Um, or it'll be short. So there's, there's, there's tons of options depending on how long this course actually is, right? So it might end up there. You might be able to bounce it and roll it on. Again, depending on how big your big dog is, how leveled up it is, whether you have a sniper that's going to give you full enough topspin to get there. But this looks like a considerably long, long hole. Now, in my estimation, my humble estimation, I think going over here with a bounce shot out to about here, right, is your other alternative. Okay, and then your second shot, and again, I really don't have a curve line, so we're just going to have to take our chance here. So what you might be able to do is then come in at this angle, which is that same, um, same landing zone, and then get it on the green into for your eagle. So um, let's take a look at some of the areas in my estimation that are going to be trouble areas and obviously right here is a big trouble area let's change that color to red because it's a trouble area trouble area because of the bunker trouble area over here because if you hit it left or short here right you're going to be in trouble in that rough if you hit it to the right on the right hand on the left hand side you're going to be in trouble over here if you're going to hit um, a tee shot to the right, great right, this could be trouble over in this area as well. If you hit it great with a curl and you bounce it over, this could be brought into play. So you have a lot of areas of concern off the tee ball again. Now, if you take a look at your second shot over here in the black line, not very much uh, maybe here if you hit it, uh, if you don't have a leveled up club. 
If you hit it great left because of the wind, trouble area there maybe. Um, if you look at yellow line, this is your trouble area right in front of the green, but that's about it. So, I mean, there's, there's options. You have a straight line right in. If you can hit it straight and perfect ball, I think you're good. If you come over here and get over this bunker here, you can bounce it on. So that's not a bad play either. So all depends on the accuracies of your clubs, the balls you're going to use, as well as um, the accuracy of the statistics of each of your clubs. So if it's a long club, if it's a short club, it all depends. So we're going to have to wait for the flyover as well as uh, the holes being opened up on Thursday so that we can get a better flavor for it. So let's close out all of these marks. All right, close out of that. And then let's move on to hole number three, which is a par three. Okay, um, again, let's get to the annotation. Black first, and then we'll have an arrow. So um, at first glance, right away, obviously, Shortest distance between two points is right in here. But this shadowed area right there, this shadowed area here, that's not very good. Let's get rid of that. This shadowed area right in here, that looks like a drop off from left to right. So it looks like it's going to filter down to the bunker. If you know anything about golf course construction design, you always let the water run off towards the lowest point, which would be a bunker. So in my estimation, with that little bit of a shadow there, it looks like it's going to be a, uh, a runoff area. So if you hit it down there, it's gonna bounce and head off to the right, which then, in my estimation, could possibly, if you hit here, could kick you over into this area, might even bring you down into here, okay? So that's the one issue. Um, so what we might want to do is land it back here with some top spin, right? And then bounce it up and roll it past that little um, area that could be possibly going from left to right down to that bunker. Get past it and get on the green, okay? Or, again, another um, option would be option number two where you could take it out here with a curl shot, okay? Um, and then bounce it right in here, this area, and then get it on the green that way. Um, taking most of the trouble out of play, but again, you're gonna have to do a curl shot um, to get it in there. And again, from the front tees, you can see the, the you know, the big, big, um, the big variance here between the first and second tees so um rookies have a significant advantage here looks like a big wood um is going to be from the uh, uh like a big dog a uh, leveled up sniper maybe a guardian or something like that if you're going to go to the left so we'll see what happens from the pro tees from the rookie tees, I think you're still going to get away with a long iron, but you're going to have to be careful from this. Uh, in my opinion, that shadow is a fall off or a topography that's going from left to right. Okay. So let's go ahead and move forward to hole number four. All right. Um, par four. Again, this, and to my opinion, this is really only one way to go on this hole from just taking a look at it right away. And that would be just down to the left, right? Just straight down here, hit it in that area, and then bounce it up into this area, okay? Bounce, end here, and then take it straight in the hole from there. Okay, um, and the reason I say that is, I mean, if you draw a straight line out to here, right? I mean, you're going to end up in this area short of the bunker unless, I don't know, you want to use one of your snow globe balls and 
try to hit your extra mile five that far, it'll never happen. And you got just way, 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 way too much danger is right there. Just too much danger to try. Um, I don't care how big the tailwind is. What is it? Most is going to be four miles an hour in rookie. There's no way you're going to make that. And then if you're going to give yourself that long of a shot, look at the danger up here. Bunker, bunker, and this little skinny area here to land it in. So from way back in this area. So in my suggestion is going to the right. Yeah, it's a little bit skinny. The fairway skinny right here. But um, big topper might be a good option where you don't overpower it, but you just hit it straight. Nice slow needle speed. Put a kingmaker on or a titan ball and let it roll and uh, get way out in this area and give yourself a nice little second shot straight in. So I think on hole number four, your best option is going right with a, uh, um, a driver, power three ball, and then uh, probably mid-ranged long iron, okay? Okay, let's get rid of all of the danger zones. Let's get rid of all of the primary routes we're going to take oh, i have to get rid of that hole number five par three all right again this is one of those <laughs> interesting par threes they love to put in that takes the whole entire tournament to get dialed in and once you get it dialed in you drop it and then the tournament's over Okay, so let's take a look at, give me a circle here. Look right here. You see that big hump right there? You can't even land the ball there without it bouncing left or right. You know what I mean? So <clears throat> you have to be careful of that um, topography there. Looks like you have a big indentation right here as well. So if you land it there, um, in my opinion, if you land it on that top ridge, you're gonna bounce that way. If you bounce here, hit land here, you're gonna go that way. You land on the back side of it, you're gonna go that way. I mean, you may have to do one of these. You can bounce it here, right there, and then hope with a lot of side spin, you bounce past it, and then you roll up in that area, maybe past the hole, and maybe they'll give us a little backstop where um, it'll come back down towards the hole, okay? But um, just based off of this picture and the indentations on the fairway in those landing zones, it's going to be very, very difficult to find the perfect spot right out of the gate, right? Like I said, by the end of the tournament, people are going to be dropping this maybe. And it's going to be, you know, oh man, I wish I would have knew. But um, I truly believe that um, our best option at, at first glance, again, just first glance, um, if you have enough, a big enough guardian, um, I'm going to use yellow here. I think we may want to just take it all the way right into this area, okay? Right here, and then use as much backspin as we can and end up like right next to the hole there, okay? So I think Guardian might be the play here on this hole, depending on what the distance is. Um, if we can uh, get away with a... Um, a guardian shot hopefully it's it's long enough where they'll give us that shot now obviously if you're going to play it back in this area you're going to be playing a uh, long iron um, from this first tee but that looks so short um, assuming that they're not going to make it that easy on us and just give us a guardian shot in there they're going to make us hit in um, in one of these areas okay they're going to have to you're gonna to have to either hit here or you're gonna to have to hit here. And that's where you're gonna to have to go. And it's gonna be it's gonna to be tough. Or <clears throat> I didn't see this, but what we might be able to do is right here. All right, the rough bump. 
fly it out into here and then rough bump it right in there because that is a pretty big area um, of rough, which gives us enough, I think, if you have a good enough topspin, Goliath 5 or a Saturn 5, where it has some topspin on it, you might get away with uh, an opportunity for a rough bump. All right, so look at that mess on there, all the options. So let's get um, all of this off here, and then let's take a look at the clean picture one more time. And look at that. Oh, that's not what I wanted. I wanted the circle, which is here. Look how big that rough area is, okay? So, fly it in there rough bump it into the hole possibly so that might be our our primary practice on thursday okay to see whether or not we can get that done and uh it's not gonna be easy for sure but it may be way easier than trying to you know take it here or here off of those noly nubby rolling hills of fairways they have there okay all right excellent Oh, it's going to be a tough course. It's going to be tough. Yeah, and everybody's getting a Christmas gift, which is, oh, by the way, sorry, you guys didn't play well. <laughs> okay, bar five. Hole number six. Again, absolutely, um, it's going to be a preference shot here from, from the tee shot. <laughs> oh, they're not making this easy on us at all all from my estimation okay black line first give me an arrow okay um black line looks like we can go straight out in here and you might be able to end up right there with a bounce shot and just roll into there or you may be able to go out just past there and end up in that area there which is there <clears throat> and again a lot of, you can use all the top spin you want a little overpower out here because that looks like a pretty generous fairway with some right spin get you right up to there and then um, over here you're gonna have to use obviously some overpower but limited top spin so you land softly over that bunker and don't run too far and again let's get into the red here which is the danger zone this grid where you could run into that trap or you could actually run into that that rough area which would on a par five just take you out of the hole which is not absolutely unacceptable on any par five in the rookie division you can't do it just cannot do it. You get killed with the low amount of level of clubs that we have. We just we just can't let it happen. All right. So when we do that, okay, option two, which is, let me show you again here. This is option two out here, okay? I don't like that option, and I'll tell you why, right? Because now option two, you have to come all the way over into here, right? And you have to fly it over the bunker, okay? Danger zone. If you hit it to the right, danger zone. You're hitting it into this little teeny gap, danger, okay? And it doesn't even look like you'll even probably get it to the hole because you'll have to take your next shot from here and get it in there for an eagle with a chip. So... My opinion is that we want us to go this angle here, okay, this way here, and then from this here, we want to come out over here and possibly bounce it over to here as close as we can for a baby chip, or if we can curl it enough, we might be able to get it absolutely right next to the green for a firefly or an end bringer, or actually get it on the green. But albatross doesn't look like we're going to have um, much of a chance for albatrosses. And the eagles might not be uh, plentiful either. So um, doesn't look very promising from 
the looks of things from the maps here. But in my opinion, no, 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 no. No, 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 no. I don't think that's the way to go. I just think that's off limits, okay? I think your your best way to go, the best way to get there, the, what is it, shortest distance in between two points is a straight line. And that is your best angle right to the left, okay? All right, let's get out of here. That's a lot of X's and that's going to be a lot of undos. So I apologize for that. But I was trying to make a point. <laughs> All right. Close out of that. And then we will go to hole number seven, which is another part three. This is like the um, oasis hole, the double, triple bounce hole. Um, again, at first glance, uh, you know, from the from the rookie tees, it, it's it's in my opinion going to be pretty much a no brainer. Okay, um, safety bounce on the green. That's our safe play. Secondarily, possibly through that snow rough bump onto the green. But as you know, the snow has a different texture than a rough bump. So I don't know how generous a snow bump will be as compared to just a plain rough bump. Okay. So uh, I think your best option is the black line. Bounce it over and try to roll it in. And um, probably going to be a, a long iron again. Going to have to have a leveled up club to give you some backspin, or you're going to have to play it um, significantly back in here, this range, and just barely bounce it over this to roll out near the hole. Okay, so we're going to have a lot of work in front of us on Thursday and Friday and Saturday and Sunday to um, collaborate on the best routes for these holes. Okay, that's. Hole seven. That was a pretty easy one. Thank goodness, right? <laughs> Finally, an easy one. All right, coming down to the coming down to the wire here. Two more. All right. Again, this is all conjecture. Okay, all based off some animation of the uh, of the holes. Um. Interesting par four here. Okay. All right. Just again, from taking a look at it, safety first, straight to there. Okay. What gets us in trouble? This area right here. Nothing really else, okay? Um, you can probably hit it a little bit great right. That might be a little uh, area of concern, but in most cases, I don't think you're going to have any problems there. But, right? But if we take the second angle and come this way, yeah, then, you, then, then we have issues, right? Then we have that bunker that comes in play over here, okay? Then you have all of this that's going to come and play on that side. Look how narrow it is up in there. This at least gives you a nice um, a nice fat area to finish your, uh, your drive in. So um, if you're aggressive, go right. If you're moderate and you're looking for a birdie, then this is a long hole. It doesn't look like you're just going to be able to make an eagle easily especially with the railroad tracks cutting across geez oh pete good luck with that um so i'm saying we're going left just based off of the picture um and then from there bounce it over and on possibly would be my best 
my best guess. And then um, if you're over here on this one, probably the same thing. We're going to have to come in here, bounce it over there as well. So um, your preference. And again, let's talk about um, concerns. This is what comes in play from the right side. Nothing really over here comes into play from that angle because it's pretty much straight. So you have one or two to, to contend with on the left. You have one, two, at least three to contend with danger spots, to contend with coming on the right-hand side. So when you're managing your bag, you're managing the course, and you're managing your game, you have to think of these things. Where, where is the trouble? Where can I stay away from it? And how can I get my birdie? So that's my opinion on um, the ease of use going down that left side. All right, last but not least, hole nine, part five. Here we go. Annotation up. Black, okay. Oh, my. Um, <laughs> again, gosh. Temptation versus straight line, straightest line and the shortest, uh, shortest path, in my opinion. Out here to out here to possibly rough bump. Nah, it's probably not going to rough bump to bounce shot over to there. Okay, so this is where um, this is where you're going to bounce. This is where you're going to end and take your second shot from. This is where you're going to bounce. And this is where hopefully you'll end up. Okay, so your one shot here. Second shot will be onto the green for then an easy eagle, hopefully. Looks pretty long, so you're going to have to bring one of your, your larger woods for sure um, to this hole. Um, going to the right, which again, I think is not the play here. Um, you may run out of real estate. I just don't think you're going to be able to get anything in here. Um, I think this area is off limits because you can roll through, and I just don't think that you can roll it through hard enough and far enough to get out into this zone out here. I just I just don't see it. And even if you did, that's that's a great shot. And if you get out here, then it's a simple, simple second shot into the green with a, you know, geez, man, maybe a, a, a long iron or a short, um, sniper or a guardian or something like that so um those are my thoughts on the hole um let's take a look a little bit real quickly at the danger danger on the on the left hand side is here and possibly here getting caught up in there not making the green so two on the left on the right is you have all of that number one and um that's pretty much it but distance Distant from here all the way up to there is a lot farther than there, you know, that distance. So significantly shorter here, a longer shot with a big dog, which is not as accurate, less controlled when you're in a five or a four level big dog, not a lot of a ball guide to see where you're going. So it's going to be a lot of guessing. So that's that's another danger zone on the big dog guess. You're guessing up here where you're going to land and how it's going to roll, etc. So you can get yourself in trouble. So, all right, that's it. Those are my assessments. Um, we'll see how accurate we are as we uh, we get into Thursday. Can't wait for Thursday. Actually, um, I look forward to it. All right. Um, also, finally, what I'd like to do is uh, let you all know that again, you may or may not know. I will be uh, Tommy's guest tomorrow, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is Wednesday um, on his um, Tuesday's you know interview. And I look forward to being his guest and enjoying a conversation for roughly about an hour, um, getting to know him and letting the community know a little bit more about me and um, my passion for the game, my passion for my family and what makes me tick, I guess. So... 
All right, everybody. With that being said, uh, I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. Thanks for watching the video. If you like what you see, maybe a thumbs up, maybe a subscription, and then hit the notification bell. If you do decide to subscribe, um, you won't be disappointed. All right. Have a great night. See you tomorrow.